Well, I've got a little question here about some strange salt deposits. This question comes from Ryan, and he said he's got a water purifier inside. He's noticed these little problems. This is what he originally sent me, and he said, just under this little pipe here, looks like an overflow pipe, he's got this discoloration of the slabs you can see around there. He said, is it anything to do with that pipe, which he said was a water purifier? Well, in actual fact, it's a water softener here's a little overflow pipe there's a close-up of it then we can see the internal plumbing arrangements here it's not going to be that pipe there that empties the water softener obviously from a washing machine but actually i'll just say just as an aside that's a slight problem you see the one above it that's the overflow but if you have a washing machine or dishwasher or anything like that going into a spigot pipe like that it should go up. You should always run that pipe up as high as you can inside there, just up to the underside of the sink, and then run it down to your dishwasher or washing machine. And the reason for that is that if you get a little bit of a slow flow on this sink, if you get a little bit of a blockage or anything like that, the water tends to back up and go over there, down in there, and into your washing machine or your dishwasher so you see all this dirty water in the bottom of your dishwasher when you think it's been emptied or even in your washing machine you open the door and you've got a flood on your hands or if not a flood you see a little bit of horrible water in the bottom of your washing machine now i went out to a, a lady once a fairly elderly lady and she she phoned me up help help plumber i need help you know my my kitchen's flooding and I got out there and the poor woman, she'd got the washing machine open and she was bailing water out from the bottom of the washing machine because it had been flooding out of the door. And as she was bailing it out, she was chucking it back into the sink. And of course, she's like the sorcerer's apprentice, if you like. She was, she was chucking it back into the sink and it was coming up and out of this pipe here and back into the washing machine. So she was caught in this perpetual cycle until I arrived and I said to her stop just stop you're okay we'll just get rid of that bit into a bucket and uh, and then the whole thing stopped and of course what it was she's got a blocked sink she got a little blockage further down there which I was able to to clear but what I did then is I took this pipe here and I ran it upwards put a little hook underneath the sink there just to hold it so it didn't flop down again and just by having that little loop in the pipe it solves that problem because if you get a bit of a flood, you get a bit of a blockage, it's going to go up to the top, but it's going to appear in the sink before or around about the same time as it fills this pipe up. So you'll be alerted to it. Whereas if it's just dropping down like this, you may never know. Well, you will know eventually, obviously. Anyway, I digress again. This is salt that is coming up from the ground or into from the brickwork. And he's only just noticed this. And he said, could this be something to do with that pipe coming out from the ground from the water softener well yes actually because what we've got here is a gravel drainage trench if you like the water that's coming out of that pipe is going along here and it's just creeping up on these brickworks now for all those people and there are many of them who say that there's no such thing as rising damp you can see a perfect example here of damp which is coming from that trench that trench has been waterlogged to a certain extent and it's creeping up the brick. Somehow it's got through that bit of mortar and it's got up into that brick and it's being stopped by the damp proof course. You can see this bitumen here and that's the damp proof course and it's stopping this water or this salt from rising. And if that damp proof course wasn't there, it would probably go up two bricks or maybe three bricks. And if that had been a solid wall, you would start to see damp on the inside. You start to see salts on the inside. But Again, I digress. That's not the question they're asking. The question they're asking is, what has this got to do with the water softener? Well, it's a resin-based water softener. And basically, you run the water that you're using in the hot taps and everything else through this resin cylinder, resin reservoir, and it removes the hardness. It removes the scale from the water. So you get lovely soft water, lovely curly hair, soft skin. I love it. So when this vessel, this resin vessel gets clogged up with the hardness with the calcium if you like from the water the water softener does a backwash a regeneration where it puts water through the water softener 
the other way round washes out all the hardness and that goes down into a drain. And here is the drain hose from the water softener and it's going down into this little spigot device here which is a self-tapping spigot. You actually just clamp this onto your waste pipe. You've got a little tool which makes a hole in the waste pipe and then you attach this spigot. Very convenient little thing. I've used them once or twice in desperation. But what I found out about these spigots is that, on, especially on some modern washing machines, it sets up a fault code on it. So the, it, the drain is blocked. And it's not actually blocked. It's just restricted because that's quite a restricted outlet for the hose um, just at that point there where it drills into the pipe. Or can be restricted right here's the softener this is the salt that you put into the softener they use the salt to regenerate the water softener so that salt isn't actually going into your water it, a little bit of it does because basically what it's doing is back washing the resin which is in this vessel here with the salty water with the brine solution and that regenerates the water softener so you get a certain amount of salt when the water softener starts working again you will get a certain amount of salt coming through into the, the water, which is why you don't drink the water softener water. We have a separate tap that's bypassing the water softener for drinking. So here's the water softener. That drain for the water softener would be down below this level here. You can see the sink or whatever, and it would be coming in under there, which is fine. But because it's restricted, when this thing starts to regenerate, and it does actually look as if it's all done on 15 mil pipework, actually. So here's the bypass for it, if you ever need to open it. So it's only done on 15 mil pipework, but maybe there's a good pressure there. So what I think it's doing is it's filling up this vessel too much in the salt water and that is coming out of the overflow. So all that's happening is the overflow is taking the excess and therefore he's getting salty water out onto his patio, causing that bit of staining on the slab, which eventually will start to erode the slab. You get, you know, degradation, the same as when they put salt on the roads, it starts to eat into the concrete. So it will start to harm the slab. It will do a certain amount of harm to the brickwork and the mortar, but it's just unsightly. So tough one, Ryan, tough one to solve, but uh, I think that's the answer to your problem, mate. I suppose the other thing you could do is you could run that overflow pipe into a drain and uh, that would solve the problem because you wouldn't have it spilling out over the patio. So I hope that's helped. I'm sorry that was so long-winded, but I felt I had to talk about those other little problems as well because um, a lot of people will have those. Not so many people have water softeners. Great thing though they are. I'm Roger Bisbee. Come back and see us soon on Skill Builder and hopefully there'll be more questions. Well, I know there will be. There's never a shortage of questions. The answers that are the difficult bit.